Good morning everyone, hope you're having a wonderful day and today we're going to be talking about the viola. It's a string instrument belonging to the string section of the orchestra and as you can see it looks quite similar to a violin. Most string instruments look quite similar to a violin but this is remarkably similar. In fact the way the, the notable differences between a viola and a violin are quite minute. So let me get into that in the beginning itself. Let's talk about the differences between the viola and the violin. So that's how it is the way. The viola plays number one in a slightly lower register. So the violin plays in the soprano register, whereas the viola plays in the alto register. So that means the viola is playing kind of middle voice. It's not too low, it's not too high, it's kind of in the middle. Whereas the violin plays in the high voice. So the viola, viola is also tuned a fifth lower. So it basically plays lower. That's the major difference. And also in terms of the instrument itself, the viola, it may not be apparent on the screen right here, but the viola is also quite a bit bigger. And that's one thing to keep in mind. It's sizably bigger in both in terms of its overall length and width. So the viola is quite a bit bigger as well. So it's lower and bigger. It's a lower and bigger version of the violin. It's quite similar as I said. So let's get into the structure of the viola, talk a little bit about what's thrown in the orchestra and the quartet, and then perhaps we pass it on to someone who knows a bit more about it than I do. Okay, so, so its, it's structure is almost identical to that of the violin, but I go through it anyways. So up here, this area right here, we have something called the scroll. It's called the scroll because it looks like a rolled up piece of paper, especially when taken sideways. And it's made of wood, and it, ha it, it houses the tuning pegs and the strings, the wound up strings. They are bringing perfectly the, to the tuning pegs, these four right here, because it has four strings. And these are pegs which you uh, they twist to tune the string. So you can, make the string, uh, you can make the string higher or lower by turning these pegs. And that's why they call the tuning pegs. The strings are wound upon them as well. And one thing to keep in mind is these pegs are very, very um, crude, very, very basic, and they're literally just pieces of wood you've inserted in holes. The fancy ones we have to do in guitar and stuff are gear loaded and stuff. So uh, tuning with these is quite difficult from experience. Okay, then we move on and we have this black this black section right here. And this is the fingerboard. And as you might imagine, it is where you place your fingers while playing the viola. So your fingers go all along the black area and over the strings, obviously. Then I can't show you the back view, but the back of the viola, there is indeed a, this area right here. So from the back side is called the neck, the neck of the viola, and the neck of the viola, like the violin, is shaved off so it's easier to move your hand around. Then we come down, this is the body of the viola, and if you hold it sideways, it's hollow, and it's about E thick, and it is sort of like a wood sandwich. We have a top, top lid and a bottom plate. It looks something like that, and from the front view, it looks like this. Coming down, we have then the F holes, which are called that because if you pay attention to the small arches here and here, they look like a lowercase f, two of them right here. And we move down further, we have the strings of course, the strings of viola are tuned C, G, D, A. I'll say that again, C, G, D, A. Great. Then we come down, here we have the bridge, very important, it keeps the tension in the strings, determines the distance from the scroll to the, to the bridge, and also very important for when the sound is going to be generated. Then we move down, we have the horse right here, this holds the strings in place, and I'm not sure if it's quite visible on um, the TV screen just because everything's black. But there are some small circular things right here, here, and here. These are called fine tuners, and you can turn them to fine. It finely tunes it, so it makes it a bit higher, a bit slower, a bit lower, because these tuning pegs are quite crude and aren't very good at the fine tuning. Then you come down here. You can see the black thing at the very bottom is called the A hole. That's where you insert the key and then here is the chin rest because you play the viola like the violin on your chin you play it like this and thus to give your chin a place to rest it's right here good now how does the viola produce sound you use a bow just like you do with the violin standard bow you have the you have the bow length the arch the hair is usually synthetic hair and or horsehair not and it's synthetic hair or horsehair and um, this is the frog and what's interesting about bows is that um, they're not fixture, the, this is movable, so I can loosen it, in which case the arch is quite big and the hairs are quite loose, and I can also turn this key at the bottom here to tighten it, fun fact about bows. Now when I stretch my bow across the things, I produce a sound, and that sound travels down the bridge, so that's another reason why the bridge is so important, it travels down the bridge into, a, into the hollow part of the violin, where a structure called a sound post makes the sound resonate, and then it exits the F holes, so that's how the sound can become so big, and so powerful and so loud, from just, you know, these what strings vibrating without any electrical amplification. Anyways, I could go in more in depth to the structure, but I don't. But it's not a good idea to. 
Now let's come to the viola's position in the quartet and orchestra. Now as I said, it plays in the middle range, in the alto range mainly, and that makes it quite, it makes it slightly more lower than the violin. Thus, the viola, when in either in a quartet context, that means with uh, violins and cellos when you play together, it's called a quartet. When you play in a quartet, and or when you play in the orchestra, the viola is usually the supporting part. It adds the harmonies, it makes the music sound so full, it gives the inner voices to the music. So when you hear a string section playing and it sounds so full and har harmonic and you know harmonies, that's due to the viola adding those harmonies. So but that being said, it usually plays the accompaniment part. It supports the other instruments when it's playing in an ensemble. Rarely you will see a viola having a solo part as well and taking up some prominent parts of the music, but this is unfortunately rare. And this has caused the music community to quite um, to make fun of the viola quite a bit for this, but it is a very important key, uh, a component because if you didn't have the viola, the sound wouldn't sound as harmonious and as full. Um, as far as solo repertoire goes, there's not that much. There's very little solo repertoire for the viola, like there's a lot of solo repertoire for the violin, sonatas, concertos, partitas, preludes for the violin. There's very little for the viola. However, um, one fun fact is a lot of composers like uh, Schubert and uh, Beethoven have played the viola. So, there you go. Anyways, I think that's all that really is to it. Um, it's quite an important part of the string section and, uh, and yeah, that's really all that there is to it. That being said, from my side, thank you very much for watching. This is all I had to see about the viola and I will see you next time.